hello everybody. Um, I'm Pat O'Sullivan, Chairman, Owner of Limerick Football Club, and um, I would like to take the opportunity of uh, hoping that everybody had a happy and healthy Christmas, uh, and of course I wish everybody a uh, peaceful and a happy uh, 2018. Um, at the outset I would like to thank uh, our sponsors, uh, for their support in 2017, our supporters, all the staff, um, in particular all the volunteers uh, who are so important to the sustainability of any club, particularly ours which is so embedded in the community. Now I would like to talk to you about uh, the future plans of, of our club. Um, you will be familiar that uh, and I have been saying it for quite some time. Um, in fact, since we before we even left uh, beautiful Tormund Park, that I personally had been funding uh, the the development and uh, the day-to-day -day costs of running that club and this club and trying to keep it uh, at a level as uh, as competitive as possible uh, in a very competitive top half of the table. Um, I have been saying for quite some time that uh, this was not possible for me in the long term. Um, now, I have been saying it for quite some time and we have reached a point now where we have to uh, firmly address uh, this particular issue uh, because uh, some clubs have become much more stronger uh, and uh, given the structures of our league, um, significant finances are required of any club that wants to stay in competition with the top of the table. So, uh, at this moment in time, uh, I am in discussion with a number of parties with a view to selling an interest in the club. It might mean 100% uh, of the club but certainly it will ensure a majority share of the club. It must be said that it is our intent to maintain senior soccer at the highest level uh, within our city and region. Our region and our city deserves to have uh, a competitive senior soccer team, uh, and, but it also deserves and must have uh, a structure and a pathway uh, to allow the development and the production of our own young players uh, who ultimately will play for our senior team. Historically, we have been blessed by fantastic local players, uh, particularly back in the 70s, 60s, 80s. However, that whole structure has dried up uh, and it has been our vision since I took over the club that we would rectify that problem by putting in place an academy uh, that would and will produce and is producing high quality young players that will go on to wear the Limerick short. While we are talking about uh, the current situation, uh, I obviously should address the question of Neil uh, McDonald's departure from the club. No more than it would be for me uh, to place an obstacle in front of any person in this club who has the opportunity to better themselves, would I for a minute consider uh, being an obstacle to Neil bettering himself, progressing himself in his career. Uh, football, like any sport, is uh, a small business in a big world and Neil and Scunthorpe acted very professionally. We absolutely has and had our best wishes. Uh, they concluded their negotiations and we are absolutely very happy for Neil and we wish him well. And we know he reciprocates our feelings uh, of him uh, towards us. From now on, uh, Eric, uh, Kinder and the staff will take over the 
management, the pre-season training, etc., etc. And uh, we, at this moment in time, are receiving applications for the job. All of this will be considered towards the end of next week when we sit down with the staff and with Eric. The senior team, where I found it, right, was uh, 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 in a difficult position, obviously, um, and uh, our vision would be uh, that we obviously wanted to have a competitive senior team. Uh, at, at the time, we didn't have sufficient uh, player quality locally uh, to, to keep a competitive team. We always had an aspiration for Europe. Uh, we love to take, and why shouldn't the city be playing European football? So uh, we put in and train a strategy uh, to, in the long term, um, to marry having a competitive team with producing local players to go into that team. And uh, so we obviously had to import players to do that. And um, in order for, uh, there's a gap in building that, that bridge between producing local players and taking your team into Europe. Uh, and there's a financial gap. And that financial gap is typically a half a million euros per annum on the basis of the income uh, expenditure structures that we have in Limerick at the moment. So um, our vision is to go to Europe, but we need to fill that gap. Hence, we need to have investors, or we need to have strong, to include outside investors, our strong local support, commercial support. From in 2009, uh, we had a vision that we wanted to, uh, let's say, strengthen the team over, uh, and, and obviously by introducing local talent where possible. So, uh, in 2012, having won the first division, we decided to go full time. Uh, and while we have been quite competitive, uh, we haven't quite reached uh, the desired level we would like to do. That, to do. Um, now, to achieve that, there's a financial cost. And I've been saying for quite some time that I can't carry that cost on my own. That cost, in real terms, is typically a half a million euros. So, if we wish to aspire uh, to have European football in Limerick, we have to find the resources to fill that gap. People should recall that when I took over the club, that the, cl the club, the senior team, had been in the first division for 19 years. Uh, we changed that. Uh, we subsequently reached EA Cup finals. Uh, we proved very competitive in the Premiership. Um, we subsequently, last year, for the first time in 32 years, uh, reached the FAI Cup semi-final. Young players coming through the club, through our academy. Um, last year, we played Shamrock Rovers in our final league game. We had seven of our own production, if you like, playing in that final game in the league last year. We've had countless young players who have played at international level for Ireland over the past number of years since we started our academy. Uh, we've had a number of players go to England. Uh, we, I think it was uh, uh, a real compliment to the club. The Chelsea Football Club uh, came in uh, in December and asked to take one of our players uh, uh, for a trial with them. We also, of course, have uh, another one of our players uh, captaining Leeds under 23, which is another product of our underage structure. So all of those things are very produ productive under my chairmanship uh, on spend of my money. I like to think that today there's a hell of a lot of young people and adults who had become totally disenfranchised from normal society uh, are now back in that. Um, I would like to think that there's a lot more to be done in that respect, but we have shown a vision. And it's interesting 
that um, that recently I was asked to go to the North of Ireland, uh, to Van Mallard, to a home game between Coleraine uh, Senior and Van Mallard Senior Soccer Team, to actually the week before Christmas, to actually give a presentation on the community work uh, that we do here and how we interact with people uh, that uh, are, let's say. Um, communities where there is really anti-social problems and how we dealt with them but how we use football uh, to deal with them. So that was our vision uh, as how we use the soccer club and that's what I want for this soccer club going forward. Right? That, it, that it is a vehicle for uh, young people who respect and love their city and region, who want to play a sport that they love and as a consequence of playing that sport and the disciplines that come with it become better people, therefore a better society. And of course linked to that now is we have our own bursary in the university in Limerick for quite a few years. So any young player that comes to us now and that wants to go into that bursary and that wants an educational pathway linked to football, we are able to provide it. And if he doesn't have the capacity to go straight to the bursary, we have a structure that takes him into another educational pathway that ultimately leads to the bursary. The second thing everybody in the Midwest region wanted was the Marcus Field, uh, that Limerick Soccer should go back to the Marcus Field. I think it was also very important from a community perspective uh, in terms of Gary Owen as a community. Uh, the need uh, with the Greyhound Board leaving the place that we should find a way uh, to save that ground, and bring it back and take Limerick back to his spiritual home. And uh, having uh, and in collaboration with the J.P. McManus Foundation, um, I have to acknowledge the support of local politicians and uh, national politicians when I was trying to purchase it. The cooperation we got from uh, Bornegon to f help to find a resolution that would allow Limerick go back there. Uh, ultimately, uh, with uh, the cooperation of the McManus and the, fu and the funding from the McManus Foundation, uh, the support of the LEDP and government funding, we now have a, a stadium, a soccer stadium, that Limerick can be proud of. And it shouldn't be forgotten that last year, that year before last, in 2016, that stadium was awarded Stadium of the Year. Um, in 2017, the club was awarded the Community Club of the Year. I also want to say that uh, I'm very proud that our club, and this is an acknowledgement of our community and our volunteer workers and people who spend long hours uh, maintaining the pitch as we're obliged to do as part of our license. Uh, I should emphasize that the club is a tenant under a licensing agreement for which we pay a f an annual fee. So the Marcus Field is very positive from Limerick in a very wide county, as indeed Thomas Park is, as the Greyhound track is, as the Racehorse Stadium is. But we need to be all working together to make Limerick a better place, and we like to think we're doing our bit in that respect. And I want to thank everybody who made any small contribution at all towards the Marcus Field being opened, being the vibrant place that it is, and we'd love to see the facilities within the market field develop more. But the fundamental thing is that that is a very important structure, which could be easily lying idle now, but for the generosity of the McManuses, the drive of the football club, the goodwill of the community, and the financial support it got from government agencies, and the stewardship of the board of the LEDP and the pragmatic working relationship we have with them.
the reasoning behind the purchase of Brough. Uh, firstly, um, the senior team now had a home to play its games in in the Marcus Field. But we're not just a senior team, we're a club embedded in the community. And of course, we have our own academy, we have various teams uh, from three years of age upwards. Uh, we have Special Olympics, uh, which uh, is a very successful uh, adult Special Olympics team, competes nationally. And then we have Football for All, which is the young special needs kids. And we then have our various academy teams, and we now have um, our national under 13 starting in 2018. We have our national 15s, we started last year in 2017. We have our 17s uh, national team. We have our under 19 national team, all breeding grounds for senior players aspiring to play for our senior team. We also have a special relationship with uh, the L, uh, LWSSL, which is the ladies uh, league, and we support them in many respects. And they play uh, ladies senior soccer under the flag of Limerick FC. So we're not just a senior team. We are a club with various strands. And that's why we needed to have a home of our own where, for example, we can bring our under 13s, our under 15s, our under 17s, and they come here and they can sleep here Friday night. They cook what they eat after training. We have school, we can give them lectures. We have a transitional year in progress, for example, for the start this year, uh, where uh, one day a week all our under 15s come out from school. These numbers will grow. So what we have here is a strategy and a plan within this place. So on private grounds uh, to develop a total infrastructure where the total club and all its activities, uh, community, because our community programs are effectively ran here as well. Um, we have a 20 odd acre site with and which will have all weather pitches, several grass pitches, small uh, size pitches, sleeping accommodation, cooking accommodation, um, strength and conditioning facilities. So all of these facilities are available to the club. And I assure you that any young person who passes through our hands will walk out of this club as a much more rounded better individual. Clearly many of our underage teams are not revenue generating. However, uh, they do, uh, the running of them does require that currently I have to invest money in renting facilities right across the city for all of these teams. Uh, I think anybody out there running any form of a club will look at finding itself uh, having to for example, in our case, alone this year, we'll have five national teams playing. And the cost associated with renting facilities for those is significant. So Bruff, uh, apart from just having a home for the senior team, Bruff is also a home, but also a cost-saving uh, uh, tool in terms of the long-term development of the club. There will be commercial aspects to this process here as well, to this, to this uh, facility, because we will have facilities that we will be able to rent and will be used to generate revenue, which will in turn then go back into supporting, consolidating, developing our underage structures. This in turn allows us to keep the pathway that we have uh, started out on in building and producing our own players. And we can do this even in a much better way because now our coaches can spend more time developing these players. It should be noted that if you look at any uh, sporting body, 
that sporting body can't exist on match fees or gate fees. It has to have a, a varied stream of revenue income. And we want Brough to be also become that for us, and it can be through the commercial facilities we intend to implant or instill or put in place here. Emphasising the importance of Portress and Brough is the fact that uh, all of the teams that we currently have, um, all of the facilities that they use are all rented, right from our Special Olympics, our football for all, our schoolboy teams, our academy teams, our senior teams. All of those costs, uh, all of those facilities that we use for training are rented. While people often find it difficult running just a local team, uh, when you think in the context that we are running five national teams, where every week we have buses travelling to Linton, Brett of Ireland, the cost of running them, the food, the professional and medical people that must follow them, the cost of referees, all of these costs are carried by me personally. And uh, it, it is not practical and it's not possible for me, and I've been saying it for quite some time, uh, that I should and be expected to do that. Uh, I'm an extremely positive person, I like to think, even though I never uh, had secondary education, right? Um, but I'm an extremely positive person. Every morning I get up, I would eat, sleep and drink uh, this football club. I would love to win the lotto tomorrow morning and I would make it pure gold, but I can't. Uh, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. Uh, everything I have, I've worked hard. I've earned it hard and I have literally spent it on community projects and on this football club to make this football club and this community uh, a better place. Um, I would have to say that I am disappointed that notwithstanding the generosity of uh, the people I've mentioned earlier, I am disappointed that uh, I haven't found um, proactive people willing to come and share uh, my load. Uh, I've been saying it for quite a while that I can't afford to carry it. Um, I don't regret for one minute what I've done. Be crystal clear about all of that. What I want is sustainability for this club so that it continues to make a positive contribution to society uh, in this region. I would hope that there are people out there who are stored enough by the honesty and the openness they've seen in our presentation uh, that they may be inspired to come and play a small part in helping to consolidate and sustain this club. The lives of many of the people I'm thinking about uh, are and their pathway is well addressed or is planned now and I think that they might consider whatever they might do as a contribution towards making the world a better place in this region through the power of sport. Um, I'm married to a very attractive, affectionate, vivacious woman in Helen. She supports everything I do despite the fact that she knows that everything I've literally earned we have put in to this project. Uh, Pamela, my daughter, my grandchildren, the people working for me directly will have suffered as a consequence because we have raided our company. Uh, we personally raided ourselves but we don't regret it for one minute because we never did it for material reasons. 
We only did it for to help our region, help the young people uh, to see a better way of life through sport. And we are satisfied that those that we touched, we haven't made uh, them feel better uh, about themselves. The easy thing to do would be to have walked away and said, good luck lads, have enough done. Uh, and by the way, if I did do that tomorrow morning, I'd have no regrets because I feel I've given this my best shot. But I hope that people out there who have the ways and means to come in here, it would be a small burden for five, seven, eight, ten people to share and to keep this wonderful sport going um, and to help to make our community and our society a better place.